Hey, it's Don the Osh Professor. Uh, today we're going to talk about another bolo, and I've addressed this slightly in some other videos, just uh, as a you know FYI. But we're going to talk about used art supplies, used paintbrushes, and things along that line. As an artist, I buy them all the time, you know, constantly, and I could make money in almost every lot of these I buy. Um, you know, it's just across the board stuff you can find, and there are vintage uh, pieces and items and collectibles that do show up in these lots as well too. So um, I've got a few items that are vintage that are worth some big money that I've actually just kept for art supplies. But we're going to go to the screen and I'm just going to talk about used art supplies, half used tubes of paint and things like that. Okay, now this category is something I've looked for for decades, not for resale necessarily. I use the supplies. I do sell it when it's items that I don't use and I, I get a bunch of them or I'll get a mess of a uh, mixed lot of brushes and I only want part of them, I'll turn around and resell them. For the most part, I keep these. But for anybody else, um, if you know a little bit about this area, know some brands, you can make a ton of money. Used paint in general sells. As long as the tubes are not dried up and hard, um, if it's oil and acrylic, that is, um, you can still sell them. If a tube of paint that's watercolor is hard, you can still sell those too because watercolor is made to be hardened and then you use water to actually lift the paint onto the brush and then the paint from there. So um, I'm going to show you just an odd mix of things here, mostly in the paint and um, brush area, but there's many different types of stuff that sell for watercolors and paints and used art supplies in general, stampers, watercolor paper, sketching paper, pads, pencils, just regular pencils. There's some odd shaped pencils that go for a ton of money. I mean, all around vintage art supplies always sell for us when I sell them. Again, I, I keep a ton. I may show just a little expose on some of the art supplies I have. I've got a huge amount and I mean a huge, you know, thousands of pencils and brushes and paint tubes and things like that. Um, you know, and I, I use them. The kids use some for school, of course, and oddball stuff like that. But overall, I've got a ton. I've bought most of it used like this because there's no sense in spending what they cost new on most of these. Um, size wise matters too. So obviously the bigger the paint tube like these are 225 milliliter, um, which are pretty decent size for these. And it's a decent brand as well. Old Holland oil paints. This set went for $1,600. Just what you see here, just those tubes. Now, new, some of these tubes and colors could be 40 or 50 bucks or even into the hundreds for one single tube of of paint and that's just the way it works because the paint's just so expensive when it's new so um, just keep that in mind when you're looking for these kind of things um, I don't think we can see let's see one of the rows looks like they show some labels let's see if we can see a price sticker on it I can't see it. Pearl, where the, you can see the label on the Pearl is an art supply store. Um, one of the very first few, there only used to be a couple Pearl stores, too, if I remember right. Most of the items were bought from online or catalogs, mostly catalogs before online was big. There's a Pearl in Orlando, or there used to be, and that's where I got a lot of my supplies, the oddball stuff that you just can't get everywhere else. Pearl Art Supplies is one of the best um have to say and that's where these tubes came from so it's top of the line product just seeing that price sticker on it even if you can't see the price i'd have known at least somebody wanted to get good stuff and they knew what they were doing to some extent if you see a pearl on them for the most part but again sixteen hundred dollars for these oil paint tubes now if it's an oil paint and dried up just go right on buy it um, but watercolor is a different story Copic or Copic. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I never actually heard anybody pronounce the word. Uh, Copic would be how I would, I would assume it would be pronounced. But these are markers. People use these in the illustration field and stuff. I've used them in college as well, too. Um, they're very expensive. So usually in college towns, when uh, a session ends, sometimes these will turn up used. So, you know, that's just a FYI um, bolo that you should be looking for and thinking about. These will show up on Craigslist. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of Craigslist anymore due to some issues around here with violence and, um, you know, some assaults and things like that that happened. But anyway, um, not my my issue. But anyway, um, these are really good. Uh, I mean, I, I don't 
really care what colors they are. 50 cents or a dollar, you could probably spend on almost any one of these, as long as they're still good. There's 351 in this lot, $820. Again, these show up at auctions. These show up at, you know, garage sales, estate sales, flea markets. Wherever you shop, you can find these exact type of items at. Um, it's harder to find these marker sets than other ones. Um, you'll find them usually in small lots. I use every one of these you see. Everything you, hear, you see here, I have spent time working with to, I shouldn't say master, because there's only a few areas that I'm really mastered in. in that's um, you know pencil and charcoal in general, and then oils and watercolors. But anyway, this is uh, pastels, which I do work in, and they're, they're, it, it, it's acquired taste. I do like them. I have no problem using them, but... Um, it's just not my my thing as a general, but this went for seven hundred and sixty dollars. Now, pastels are hugely expensive, no matter what. Even some of the cheaper brands can go for good money. Even small quarter boxes, half boxes, and things like that. This is a very large assortment. Most of the better ones will come in a wood box with little grooves, um, like a grooved board behind them that have every one of these, you know, a spot for in that box. Um, I keep lids and things, and I keep boxes just for my cabinets that I keep my supplies in. So, And you'll see everybody usually does the same thing. Again, wood box, as I said. Um, name brand, this is a good name brand. Anything that says Paris is usually good. Uh, Sennelia, Sennelier, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Again, I'm terrible on pronunciations, I, I have to admit. Um, but anyway, let's see. It's a real nice set. $760 on that one. Uh, it, it does help to know the difference. Now, there's two types of pastels. That was a soft pastel. Um, they're more like chalk in, in such worth. And you can get pastel even in pencils that look similar to this as well. And then there's oil pastels and oil sticks that are you know, similar, but they're more like smearing around oil paint as opposed to lightly brushing around chalk or, or charcoal substance, uh, like a substrate for it. I, I don't really know how to explain what it is, but I, I use all of this. You know, I'm, I'm very good at most everything that has to do with pencil or working with your hands on stuff like this. I'm not the super, super painter on everything, but pencil wise, I, I'm, I've always been, you know, excelled in that, you know, and I've taken classes and stuff. So I, I love 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 art supplies you know so if i'm out somewhere I'll, I'll run across the building to get to the art supplies um i collect them too i collect ones that you know i actually use i've got an 1890s airbrush i've got 1880s and 70s um like not t squares they're unique drawing tools made out of stamped out brass and in and, and steel still um and you know those are collectible in their own right um but i still use them every art supply that i keep I use. I don't keep any that I'm not going to use, just FYI. So if if I keep an 1890s airbrush, I want to know how it works. I'm taking it apart. Um, I'm seeing if it's repairable or if it still works and serviceable. Does it need a spring? All that kind of stuff I do. Um, and sometimes I'll do that um, even if I'm not going to keep the item just to get it in working order because I, I feel, you know, exhilarated getting these things running still if they're old like that. But anyway, um, I know that's a little off track, but these items are just awesome to me. I love art supplies. I, I could spend a lot of time in a Pearl or, you know, a, a Dick Blick or something like that. Tons of time looking through it. Dick Blick's another catalog, basically. I don't know. I'm sure they have a site. I know them back from the day when you'd get catalogs, and I used to get American Artist Magazine, and I, I'd, you know, see the Wildlife Expo painting and illustration mags that came out, like, every three months quarterly and things like that. I used to be big into that. An artist ma Magazine, Watercolor Magazine. I, I used to get all those. Nowadays, I just get them from the library or something, um, if I'm ever even interested nowadays. I'm not around with the magazines but time goes elsewhere and you know I just draw these days I don't really care what somebody else is doing I do what I like and just like on eBay and whatever else I do so but these are typical cases these are how you'll find them um, the pencils on these are probably sitting in a metal uh, cradle underneath them it's probably one long piece of metal it's probably mounted into the wood at some point um, and then you'll see the strings because usually these are too high on some of these so you could pull them out or they have the strings they're just basically loops on either end so you can pull them out and walk around and set these near your drawing area so you don't have this whole setup 
Um, and then, as I said, some of these sets, you'll see like this, they'll be two rows high. So there'll be another wooden box underneath this or wooden tray with another set of pencils, just as many as you see here. So that's usually how these come. Most of the time when I see a wooden box that's squared off, that looks like a flat wooden briefcase almost, most of those are some sort of art supply case or even a fold down easel because some of the traveling and, and Plyna Air uh, easels and things go for hundreds and I've sold them you know in that range even I've bought them at um, savers and um, made purchases at Goodwill and even auctions on all of this stuff everything you see here I've bought and <clears throat> every everything you see here I've bought at pretty much any place you could imagine um, it, it's just the way I find them I can find them anywhere because this is nothing to some people someone uh may who may get this at a garage sale their kid had it for for college or something they have no clue how much these things cost some of these sets are you know a couple dollars a pencil and you know if it's a two or three hundred dollar pencil set you've got some money charisma is one of the key ones i look for i would say it's on the top of my list for best pencils um in in that has a big play in how much these things go for so if it's a um, Charisma pencil, they're solid. Um, if you do a lot of drawing, you're going to end up, you know, sharpening pencils left and right. And sometimes you might go through pencils in the same day if you're doing a lot of work. I've worked for hours on, on artwork sometimes. And pencils sometimes will just break right after you sharpen them. I've got, you know, every size. There's multiple sizes of pencil sharpeners to do, you know, fine points, uh, long and elongated points in, in various styles and points on, on pencils, depending on the artist's preference. So I try other ones. I make sure my blades are sharp. So I know that my stuff is working fine. So when these things break and stuff, they're just inferior quality. These pencils will sharpen perfectly every time. You'll never have a break in the middle of the lead. It won't crack or the wood won't split or there won't be any extra shavings. It's hard wood. Wood. These are these are really nice pencils. I, I've used them. I have some. Um, you know, I, I can't speak enough for some of these brands. I mean, just just for sheer um, art ability. I'm not so fanciful on the end they have here. Um, I know you can shave it down with a razor blade and stuff like that, which some people do. I like the flat ends personally. Now, these are angular ends, and you get less out of them. I've got little tools that when these get smaller, you can put it in. It's like an extension, so you can use these till it's like an inch nub, and that's all that's left. So I, I use every inch that I can of a pencil, so it aggravates me on that. That's the only thing that I have that's against these pencils. But they're, personally, I know people think that's crazy, but it's well worth 630 bucks for these to me if, if you know, I would have kept them i would have lost that 600 buck profit um, but anyway more pencils uh, again there's different sets of these this is a i would say a lesser set it doesn't have all the same um types in it um yeah it's 108 so it's missing the some of the the multicolored ones that are little special pencils in the middle there's tons of different kinds of pencils i could go in all day just talking about pencils believe it or not i've got maybe a thousand different colored pencils myself in my own personal um cabinets that i use and there i use vintage cabinets even to store this and i've got a um sheet music cabinet for some that I have uh, drawers or trays like this that are individually slidable into there. Nothing fancy, but it all works. And I've got some old cabinets like uh, lens cabinets and jewelers watch cabinets and things like that. So and I've, I've used these stuff, this stuff for, you know, my whole life. I've been drawing and using oddball pencils since I was like seven, since I first found out you could do all this stuff with pencils. So anyway, um, $554 for this set. Again, it's a big difference. There's $100 just in that, those few different pencils not being in here, just because some pencils out of this brand can go for... I've even seen some pencils almost 10 bucks for just one, and that's crazy to some people, but you know, I don't have a problem with it. I've got mechanical pencils that go for a couple hundred dollars on their own, and I, I've got a bunch of vintage ones that are multi-tooled that do many different things for mechanical pencils. They haven't made anything like it in years. I won't get rid of those either. I don't care what they're worth. Um, people like me who love doing what we do and the, uh, been using these same tools that they haven't made for a couple decades just go nuts on them. And I, I understand that. So if this is one area I don't, I don't have a problem, um, you know, or think it's weird when some stuff goes for just phenomenal amounts. Um, like some of this Iowata, uh, some of these airbrushes are just phenomenal. Used airbrushes I find quite often, so that is a, a better one. I usually test every airbrush I get out, and not necessarily to 
test it for you know sale wise um, for myself I'll swap one out sometimes so if I get one that looks better than what I have or it has a different size chamber or the the functionality is better or it has a smoother pull or drag on it I'll, I'll flop it out you know um, better needle better quality needle or it has got the cap or I'll keep pieces or whatever the case may be there's not much to these so once you've understood how they they work it's just super to use these so anyway 470 bucks for a used one of course it's got everything with it i don't care about the boxes when i buy stuff like this I, the, I want the piece to work individual airbrushes can go for a thousand or better for a good one um some of them go for well over that and i'm just talking about fine art airbrushes too like an ab style airbrush or external mixture there's tons of different kinds of airbrushes as well too which again i could go into a bunch of detail just on airbrushes we're not going to waste the time on it this is the principle look for the name brands iowata that's one um here's some more soft pastels is this soft or is it, it says soft but they look personally more like oils to me they could be soft usually the oils are wrapped up in these plastics and soft are usually in paper um, they may just not know and it's possible or it is possible that they're just wrapped differently than I'm used to uh, but again trays in the box you can pull the trays out almost every set of art supplies like this that are good have those little loops so you can pull them out and you know you'll be able to move around with that tray most of the time you're working with like a set group of colors when you're doing something uh, some people even like me would keep an extra set um, in like a case or a tray that we can keep empty you know just an extra tray and then you can actually load your own so you have the exact color mix you want for your project so I, I buy actually empty boxes and containers for these sometimes too and they will sell online for the exact same reason I just said so even if the supplies aren't there I still sell the cases the empty trays and things like that too so you can find empty trays I find art supplies almost every single week of my life um, at some point and then I end up selling some I have friends as well too so obviously we trade some of these too because I have some art artistic friends Copic uh, Copic again however you want to pronounce it um, I know somebody's gonna slander me for that but that's you know even even in school I never heard it pronounced uh, one specific way even a teacher uh, pronounced it several different ways I don't know what the pronunciation is but 435 for this grouping here again used or not most of the time when I find these they were like college students or something or somebody wanted to try them out or got them as a gift and it just wasn't their thing and you know then they're then here here we go you know most of the time most people don't even know what they're worth now there's some art supplies like this this looks pretty dismal now if the paint's still good it's fine um, some people do recreations or repairs on old paintings and the only way to do a true repair would be to have vintage paint and, um, you know, so sometimes you'll run across stuff like that. Devo, if I'm not mistaken, still makes paint today. I could be wrong. But these tubes, if the paint's still usable, somebody could be using it for that. But for the most part, I would imagine this set is being bought for the box that it is in. Um, these Plein Air and these outside painting cases are usually worth a lot of money. Even that empty bottle there could be worth a few bucks there. So um, 429 for this. So vintage collectible in, in itself. A lot of people who paint and do historical style paintings like to paint with historical equipment. Um, just like I keep the vintage you know, 1890s airbrushes and I also keep 1880s, 70s, 60s, 50s. I think the oldest piece I have is like from the 1850s and it's some brass um, square basically. So I, I keep those too. I get the I, I get the joy of using stuff like this so that's why these sell so there's a group of people just like me that collect the vintage antique art supplies and that's what they use to paint and to do their artwork with it kind of draws you to the past and it's it, it's a neat experience I guess it's like driving around in an antique car you know somebody owns a 65 you know uh, Chevelle or SS or something or an RS Camaro 69 you know with mags and all that on it um, 427 turbo jet engine and something these are all vintage so it gives you the thrill of doing it the same thing for people who do artwork I appreciate vintage cars so for me my father was a hot rodder and used to do the car shows and used to even uh, redo cars so you know I, I I appreciate all this kind of vintage stuff in your life I, I don't mind the old the people recreating the rockabilly look these days um, you know or the goth look um, doesn't bother me at all 
or you know the the steampunk or anything like that so anyway that's how this is there's there's people who dress up spe- steampunk and do comic uh, shows or do magic or they literally paint in those styles so anyway let's just move on here 429 um i know that's off topic again but again this is this is this is what i like soft pastels now again there's different sets of all of these you can get um, this one, there's no doubt this is soft pastels. Usually the soft pastels you'll see in cases like this, the better ones anyway. Um, and these are used. You can see the paper is down too on these. So these look like they've been fairly well used. Um, I would have to take a better look on these anyway. But this is a portraits painting colors basically. So some sets are put together, um, you know, by the artist. So you'll run into some. It's just somebody who just did portraits, and that's all the colors are there. There's landscape sets and wildlife and, you know, floral and whatever you can possibly imagine actually. Um, these are half sticks too. So there's a difference. There's half sticks and whole sticks. Half stick doesn't mean it only fills up the thing halfway. It's a, a full-fledged size. So you'll just have to know the difference. Some brands, their sizes are different. Some brands have square sticks. Some have round sticks. So there's a there's big, uh, big difference in a lot of these pastels. Just know the brands. Know if there's a big box. It's wood. It's you know lined with, with um, the foam. It's usually a good set, especially by name brand. But not name brand necessarily because there's some cheaper brands just by sheer quantity that you'll be able to sell as well too so i've got maybe a thousand pastels myself too i've got maybe six big cases of them um you know maybe i've got more than that. i don't even i couldn't even tell you these days i just keep them when i get them now here's one that usually blows people away when they see the prices on these this just looks like some used junky dried up paint to most people Anybody who has touched watercolors knows that that is not the case. This paint is the way it's supposed to be. You take it out in the field, it's going to dry no matter what. You literally can use this paint forever until it's totally gone because it just takes water to pull it back up off, you know, to pull it into the brush, to wick it up into the brush. So this is a very nice set. This is a bijou box. Now, bijou box, you should know, they're they're deep. That is a big plus in these because it takes a lot of paint in these. So these last a lot of t- a long time. Even an empty one of these will sell to. Um, hopefully, you can get the gist of just how much paint is in this. this. There's almost a whole tube or more in some of these. So you know, and this kind of paint is expensive. Special, I believe it's a uh, name brand here, yeah, Windsor & Newton. So, you know, it's an expensive paint. So each one of those colors, new as a tube, could have cost, you know, 40 50 bucks possibly. So it adds up really quick. So, you know, this is, again, something that I would look for. You can replace the inserts, you know, if something happens to some of these. But this is typically what you will see. And there's more. There's tons of these. It's not just a one-off or some rare random item. 385 bucks used. Here's a smaller one. Um, and it doesn't even have as much. It's mostly for the box on this one here. People want the genuine item. They want these cases. You can replace pieces to it and stuff like that. You can buy the paint in it that way. This one went for $315. And again, uh, this is no anomaly whatsoever. 41 bids. Windsor Newton, same paint. So, you know, you can't go wrong here oil pigment sticks there's many things people do with these they can be smeared on you can mix them you can blend them you can use them as pastels oil pastels basically um just a big group used a lot of them the metallics were always my favorite because it literally can make items look like metal but this is probably more along the lines of a crafter who used these from what my guess would be because of the metallics but 280 bucks on those again i could show you this this kind of stuff all day long just because there's so much of it um, used airbrush now uh, there's different varieties and, and types and how they mix and how you activate them but two hundred and thirty two dollars um, I'm assuming this gentleman used this to do the yeah probably so looks like airbrush work but anyway uh, that's another gonna Iowata again too 232 as I said here's just another nice um, Grumbacher nice and Liquitec I use Liquitec myself um, in Grumbacher I don't, I don't care what brand it is usually as long as it's one of the name brands and I'll mix and match I'll use you know one brand of black and one bla- a brand of another like red or something just because the colors usually are better in some brands than others just from my own personal experience Liquitec is a cheaper paint but they usually come in big tubes and um, you know it, it's well usable so anyway 
Um, and there's different kinds of oils as to um, alkyd and things like that. There's fast drying oils. There's substances you can add to oils to make them fast drying. There's thinners. There's linseed oil. Um, same with watercolors. There's frisking, um, liquid frisk it, and stuff like that to mask off masking materials. Here's an AB. Now I've got a couple of these personally that um, I upgrade when I get a better one, but I've got a couple that I use. These are usually done for like um, fine details, airbrushing out um, photo issues and things like that, and correcting photographs and things. This is a key one here, and there's nothing else to it. This is the whole thing basically. The, the paint goes into this chamber up on the top right, and then it's siphoned off through air that runs off the side of it, and it sucks it on through there. But anyway, it's it's a whole mechanism in here. It's a really complicated um, technique on these kind here. Some of them sound like a um, like an old drill, like a dentist drill some of these run into. So anyway, I like the sound of some of the earlier ones anyway. They make a tick or a, uh, like almost a mechanical engine sound. Basically, it is something similar, but anyway, 225 on that one. More of the markers, as I said, again, they show up all the time. 90 gently used, $215. I'm sure if you go down and read the description down there, at least half of them are going to be college or artwork or a project or business or whatever, something along that line. They, they bought them for something specific, used them for that, never had another use for them. Because that's usually what it is. These are for illustrators for the most part, people who do this kind of stuff for a living. Um, otherwise, it's just not practical or economical for anybody else to use these because they're extremely, extremely expensive new. You can see by the prices on them. They're, they're outrageous. They're good, so don't get me wrong, but... Uh, now these, um, now this is another oddball uh, topic on these. These are Japanese. Now anything Japanese, I always nab up. I don't care if it's a name brand or not. Just e even not to sell, just because the quality on these, they're usually hand turned out and. They're just the finest quality, usually quill and uh, fine bore or sable, sable usually, or some custom blends of, of, of um, fibers, um, usually hand-marked, hardwood. Some of them have a clip or a hook on the back like this one. Most of them are, are, are extremely nice. This is a pre-owned one, one that was used. Kumano brush. Now, I'm not sure how it's pronounced again, but I'm, I'm sure that's pretty close. $510. Now, even a non name brand one can go for 40 or 50 mind you. I sell brushes a lot just because brushes I'm able to get fairly cheap and fairly reasonable. Um, I keep, you know, at least half of every, every group I ever get though. So um, now here's a nice big lot for somebody. Now this is for porcelain in China. Now it says vials because most of this is powder. Um, you could sprinkle it, you'd mix it, and things like that. So I took a pottery class, too, um, once before. I like it. It's something neat. So it's, I just don't have the patience to blend and mix and do the colors and worry about the kiln. We have a kiln. We have a pottery kiln, too, a big one, too. But um, it just wasn't my thing. So anyway, I, I like it. I wouldn't mind if somebody was, you know, to help somebody or do it with somebody else, too. But it was a long, drawn-out process, and I didn't want to mess with the big learning curve on something like that because the sellability in my my personal ability to make a return on the artwork just wasn't there for, you know, my time. Anyway, so anyway, this is $338. Uh, these these will show up even used from like the 30s and 40s. The material will still be good and still be usable, so keep that in mind. These look like they're a mix of vintage ones. Um, some of these could go way back, and even the paintbrushes look like they're older, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, for the most part, you know, you'll get a gist on the paintbrushes too, but there's thousands of paintbrushes and usually it's easy to tell the difference by, by construction. Um, Bob Ross is another one. I always look for stuff like by him. Um, there's a few brushes of his, like some of the, the fantail brushes that uh, are phenomenal. Uh, they're made by one of the main companies, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Windsor & Newton. Somebody makes them for him or made them for him. Um, you know, again, people think he's just a, a quack. He wasn't a quack. He was a military guy. I mean, he's a good guy from everything I see. His son paints as well, too. Um, I remember watching him as a kid here and there. Um, and then there was a couple of magic of painting. There was a couple other ones that um, maybe William Alexander or something like that. I can't remember the other ones. But back in the day, there wasn't cable when I was a kid. And PBS was one of the four channels we got on TV with the antenna we had. And so I've seen most of those kind of shows.
Um, but I would sell most of this to somebody else just because I'm not a Bob Ross style painter. Nothing against him at all or his family. So anyway, um, I was always a fan. So he was always a nice wildlife person and remember the squirrels and animals he had. But anyway, a uh, nice lot there. Um, 287 now. Everything Bob Ross sells, even the small sets, everyone sells. I've always been able to sell every Bob Ross lot that I've ever gotten. So anyway. Uh, now, again, sable brushes. This is now Series 7 in the size. This is all important. It's the size 12 brushes you see at the top. That little emblem is the Windsor & Newton label, or uh, I guess mascot emblem, seal, whatever you want to call it. Series 7 is the quality. It's the finest sable, just as it says. This is The best brushes in the world have this type of sable and this type of construction. This is Windsor & Newton. It's made in England. It's got a... I don't remember if these were oak or hickory boxes, but they're they're phenomenal boxes, even just the boxes. And some paintbrushes I will keep separate just because, you know, a good paintbrush, as I've said in, prior in this video, can cost you a thousand bucks or better. So, you know, only a true painter is going to buy one of those and appreciate it for my part, though. Um, I would have kept this one, too, at 500. I would have kept this brush and it would have been, you know, on my top shelf brush stack. You know, I've got half a dozen or more that are worth four or five hundred dollars from buying these lots. And, you know, if I ever, you know, get hard up, I, I've got a handful of brushes that'll get me a couple thousand bucks and without a, a problem. And, you know, they don't depreciate these brushes. They they just go up because once someone has been, you know, using one of these for a while and they're fond of the brushes, they'll only want to use a specific brush. You know, I'm very picky and particular on the brushes I use. I'm very particular on some of the, the makers of charcoal and charcoal pencils that I use just because uh, there's certain kinds that just don't work as well as others. So, um, you know, I know I'm not throwing a lot of stuff in here, but this is a big field. There's tens of thousands of this kind of stuff for sale at any given time on eBay. Not just used stuff, but new stuff as well shows up at these same auctions. So know something about it. Know something about the art industry because so much stuff in that industry is worth a lot of money across the board. New, used, or indifferent. Even, you know, emptied out, you know, bins and tins and things like that will still sell just because people do collect them as well as use them. Um, but 500 bucks basically for that. Here's a nice little lot of brushes. Um, some of these are just junk. Um, now the acrylic one, I use a similar one. The blue ones on the right are junk. The big house paint brush is junk. But there are some, yeah, there's some decent brushes in here now. So it just depends on what you're doing. The far left brush now, that big one, the, the wide one, that's a nice one. It's got a metal shaft all the way around it. That is a heavy-duty, well-constructed um, artist's brush for doing um, a canvas. So anyway, that's a nice one. So 186 on that group. Uh, the next item here, now these are specific types of paint brushes. Um, $189. They're unnamed for the most part. Some of these were probably rigged up for the specific person who is using these. Um, they're done with pinstriping and things like that, quills and things. These are fine, fine items here. You won't find these um, every day. So these probably went really quick. $189.99. Another Windsor & Newton. Now, this is just a lot of used paint. It looks older. Most people pass this up. The brushes themselves aren't super nice-looking brushes. Uh, there's one or two that are, are decent that have interchangeable heads that you can keep the shaft and swap it out. The paints are older, but the paints, as long as they are still pliable, uh, the non-watercolor ones, um, you're fine. And if the watercolor ones are hard, who cares? Because that's the way you use them. Somebody will probably still use the tin that this came in in the back here. So excellent, excellent here. 140 bucks. That's actually kind of cheap for that one. Uh, another mix. Now, these are early ones, and I have some just like this. Uh, these are 30s or so. The ends were made so you can swap them out in different sticks so you could extend the length and use large sticks, long sticks, whatever you wanted, the, the brush handle, that is. Um, but it's a nice mix. These are early ones, too. Re quite early. So someone's going to fix these up. As long as the bristles aren't, you know, dried out to the end, um, they're fine. Now, you'll have to check these out. As long as the bristles are soft and still flexible, um, you know, that's the key here. Vulcanized and rubber. Yeah, see, these are some very expensive early ones at the time. You can see there's one that's hand-wound. It's quite a few, actually. This is typical of this era, and they always seem to sell... Um, I don't know how you preserve these, but I know you can go back in. I've got some like brush saver that I use, but when they're this old, I don't know if it's possible. So you always 
brush the bristles back and forth lightly and see if a bunch come off in your hand, pass up the br brushes when they look like this. If not, they're killer good ones. 128. And then the last one, just some more brushes. Um, Name-wise means something on some of these. Usually if it says France, I take a chance on it. Um, is a bay. Um, and again, pronunciation may be off, but this is another item that I look for. Brushes. I've got thousands of brushes. I love brushes. You'll get to be in a groove and you'll, you'll use a brush, the same one, all the time. And then when it gets damaged, you're going to be hunting around for that exact same brush, even if it's vintage, just because you loved that brush so much. You knew every inch and speck of that brush and you knew, you know, how to fan it out right or whatever it did. So anyway, that's just what it is on these. So um, you can see I do love what I do on these and this is a good key area for us. If you find this stuff and you're passing it by, you're missing a ton of money. This field is is a high dollar, huge profit margin for us, you know, even when I'm just selling my extras. I still make a ton of money and I get to keep the art supplies that I want and make the profit. So again, this is one of the best ones I can tell you about that you're going to find everywhere. So this one beats most of the other ones. I might just be saying that because that's how I feel because of the art supplies. But, you know, I, I love finding this stuff, honestly. So I love to see what I'm going to get to keep or want to keep out of the lot when I get it. I'm like a little kid at the candy store when it comes to art supplies. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. There's another bolo. It's an interesting item. Uh, again, I'm an artist, so for me, I do look for these things to actually use, and I do sell a bunch as well, too. So if you're not an artist, you've got your field wide open. These things show up all the time at estate sales and garage sales. Those are the biggest place, or even at auctions, local or even home sale auctions and things like that. So hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.